border barring crude exports from South Sudan, diffusing tensions between the two countries after days of saber rattling between the two neighbors. In a statement, Sudan said it could reverse its decision if its southern neighbor stopped backing rebels operating in its southern frontier. It clarified that Sudan had given the south time to respond and maintained, however, that the pipelines may still be closed within 60 days. Now, this standoff, even if it is eventually resolved, is a pretty stark reminder of the unpredictability of this small but still significant corner of the global crude oil industry. Industry sources say cross-border crude flows are continuing normally since oil operators had not been told by either governments, that of Sudan or South Sudan, to halt any shipments or turn off wells. A stoppage, however, would cut off crude and transit fees that make up both countries' main source of foreign currency income. It's no secret that infrastructure provision does remain a key challenge in Africa. Now, a lot of the focus so far has been on the need for more and better road and rail infrastructure, but parts of the continent are also grappling with underinvestment in air transport facilities. Mozambique and South Africa have taken two slightly different approaches to financing their airport infrastructure, as CCTV's Angela Coppola now reports. The government-owned South African airports went through an infrastructure build program prior to the 2010 Soccer World Cup. Their shareholder told them to go to the markets to get financing. Mozambique, on the other hand, has taken a different approach. It sought private investors to fund and operate the latest development in the north of the country. In north, up north in Pemba, there was a bid that was done by the government looking at a private entity to build the airport. Uh, we can see how difficult this will be because the time it is taking to have a, a private entity coming on board to do this, that, that is what is showing us that the recovering of the investment is still being looked at and it may end up by government having to invest in th at that airport. Manaba's South African compatriots went through the investment scenarios with potential funders on the open financial markets. Investors, they say, have simple needs. They're looking for predictability and they're looking for certainty when they make those investments. There's no doubt that airport investments are very good investments, but they want to know that if they take a 10 or a 20 year view on an investment, the certainty that exists today will still be there 20 years on. Mozambique has another challenge, and one that can't be addressed or resolved, which makes for a very limited market in the country. We have 23 million uh, um, people in the country, but we only have a million flying. So this is the no total number of, of passengers in the Mozambique market, over the 23 million, so which shows that the elasticity is very little. Countries have adopted different financing models to meet their airports' needs. Brazil has five money-making airports. Their other smaller airports are cross-subsidized and airlines are incentivized to fly through those airports. In South Africa, you, we are fortunate in that we have a network of airports. And you will find that um, if we had standalone airports, it would be a lot more expensive to fly into Port Elizabeth or Durban or Bloemfontein than it would be today. So. OR Tambo being the hub is able to actually keep tariffs down because it subsidizes the smaller airports. The biggest challenge facing less developed African countries and their airports is one of passenger usage. Research shows that 50% of Africa's cities have fewer than 50 flights that fly into and from local airports, partially because the populations don't have disposable income and can't afford to fly. This makes it less attractive for investors looking to get involved in those airports. I'm Angelo Coppola for CCTV in Cape Town. Right, quick run through the markets now. Let's see what your money has been doing across the four key bosses that we track for you here on Africa Live. Starting, of course, in Nigeria. The market in the green, but only marginally so, up about a tenth or so, so far in early trade. In South Africa, the uh, All Share Index at 40,835.51 in the green, but only relatively so. You could just as well say it's flat. The 20 share index in Nairobi in the red by about half a percentage point, and the Egyptian markets also down by 1.91%.